Okay, this one is number five on the homework. I'm going to work all the way through it uh, for, for your edification and inspiration. If you're struggling with these, watch some of the techniques that I employ. It might help you out, okay? Okay, the differential equation is xy double prime plus quantity 2x plus 1 times y prime plus quantity x plus 1 times y equals 0. Uh, because when you divide through by x and put it in standard form, the q term has a denominator of x, and we would like to find an infinite series solution of this around the point x equals 0. That's why this qualifies for Frobenius, because it is undefined at x equals 0 when you put it in standard form. Okay, okay. Uh, that means, well, I actually did this one earlier in terms of the recursive relationship, so we won't go through that right now. It's uh, 0, 0. This one's a double root. That makes it a case 2. But again, we're going to use the shortcut to get the second solution. So right now we're just focused on the first solution. First solution is going to be uh, y equals summation n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. Again, we've multiplied it by x to the r, which is just 1 because r is 0. Okay. Uh, first derivative of that is summation n equals 0 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1. And the derivative of that is y double prime, and that's summation n equals 0 to infinity of n n minus 1 x, oh, a n x to the n minus 2. Okay, now it's time to plug these into the differential equation. It's going to form five terms overall, which is what makes number five a little challenging to start, but it'll default down to three terms pretty soon. So let's get to work. x times this will reduce the power on x by one, otherwise it won't change. So the first series is summation n equals zero to infinity of n times n minus one, a n x to the n minus one. Second series is uh, the middle one, y prime, but it's times x, so that'll reduce the uh, power on x by one. So it's plus summation n equals zero to infinity of n a n x to the n. And then one more of those just on its own for the plus one. So plus summation n equals zero to infinity of n a n x to the n minus one. And then we work on the last term, which will be x times the primary function plus 1. The x times it is going to produce an n plus 1, so plus summation n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus 1. That's for the x. And then one more of those just on its own. Summation n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n equals 0. Okay, take a deep breath. Uh, now we'll notice that three of these have the same powers of x. Uh, this pair right here has uh, x to the n minus 1, and because of that I can put these two summations together to form a single term from them. I can do the same with the first and uh, the second and the last because they're both x to the n. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do both of those first. So the first term is going to be n equals 0 to infinity. It's going to be n times n minus 1, and then in order to take this one into account, that's another n, so plus n. So it's n times n minus 1 plus n and then all that times a n x to the n minus 1. That takes care of this series and this series. They're all accounted for. Plus, the two that are x to the n is the, fir uh, this, the uh, first one here and the last one, and this one's just n plus 1. Oh, I did forget the 2, because I remember that from earlier. It was 2x times this one, not just x. So there's the 2 back again. Uh, so this one's summation n equals 0 to infinity of 2n plus 1 times a n x to the n. And then the last one, that takes care of these two. The last one is just this one it's on its own. It has nothing to combine with. So summation n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n minus plus 1 equals 0. So you can see that trick right there uh, significantly shortened the series. To, so now there's only three terms to worry about instead of the five that we had. Uh, and that means I can reduce orders and change things around here a little bit easier. I'm going to change colors because I'll show you a little shortcut that helps you to, to kind of reduce these orders. Okay, I want to replace this n plus 1 with an m, which is equal to n plus 1. 
that's going to make this just n. So I'm just going to strike out the n plus 1. And then what it's going to do is replace all the n's by m plus 1. And I'm going to change it back to n's anyway. So I'm just going to put a plus 1 here. And that makes this one correct. I'll play with the index later. Okay. We do the same thing over here. I want now m to be equal to n minus 1. So that's going to take uh, away that minus 1. And then it's also going to replace the n's by m plus 1. So I add a plus 1 here. And all these n's all need a plus 1. So this one's going to be n plus 1. This one's just going to be n. And this one's going to be n plus 1. And again, I'll fix the index later. So now I can rewrite all of this in terms of the new indexes. This is going to be summation n equals 0 to infinity. Now if I look at this carefully, this is n plus 1 times n plus n plus 1. So it's n plus 1 times n plus 1. That's just n plus 1 squared. A n plus 1 x to the n. And now the second one's rewritten. There was no changes to this one. n equals 0 to infinity of 2n plus 1, an x to the n, and then I'll write the last one, summation n equals 0 to infinity of a n plus 1. This one's going to be minus 1. I knew I had a mistake in there when I wrote it, so minus 1. This one's minus 1, minus 1, uh, x to the n. Good. I think I caught all my little mistakes in there. Good news now is they're all x to the n, which means we can start forming the recursive relationship. The only problem is because this one's got an, uh, an a sub uh, index of n minus 1, this one can't start at 0 because there's no such thing as a minus 1. a naught is the first term. So this one starts at 1. But the other two can start at 0 because there's no problem with their coefficients. And that's really the only place the problem gets generated is the coefficients or the terms for a. So let's see, this one is a n plus 1. There we go. So uh, now I can start writing the uh, relationship. These two will both produce at uh, n is 0. This one won't start until n is 1. So when n equals 0, what we get is, uh, for the first term, we've got uh, 0. This is 1 squared, so that's 1 a 0. So. Oh no, a n plus 1. So this is 1 uh, a 1 plus uh, at n equals 0. This produces 1 a naught. And this one doesn't produce yet. Equals 0. So that means a 1 is equal to negative a naught. Okay, when n equals 1, we'll get a term from all three series. So this one's going to be 1 plus 1. 2 squared is 4. Uh, a n plus 1, that's a 2 plus... This one, n equals 1, that's 2 plus 1 is 3, uh, a 1. And this one, at n equals 1, it produces an a naught plus a naught equals 0. But a 1 is already equal to negative a naught, so this one's going to be negative 3 a naught plus a naught, that's negative 2 a naught. That's going to be 2 a naught on the other side, divided by 4 is 1 half. So a 2 is 1 half a naught. And I'm starting to see something here already. We're getting alternating signs, so there's going to be a negative 1 to the n. And I'm suspicious that there's a factorial in the denominator. Let's check n equals 2. This will seal the deal. When n equals 2, we get 2 plus 1 is 3 squared is 9. Uh, a 3 plus uh, this one, n equals 2, is 4. 5 a 2. 5a2 plus, and this one always just produces uh, n minus 1, so it's a1 equals 0. Well, a1 was negative a0, a2 is 1 half a0, so that's 5 halves a0, minus 2 halves a0, that's 3 halves a0, and then uh, divided by 9 when it's on the other side is going to make uh, negative 1 sixth. So a3 is equal to negative 1 sixth of a0. And there's that pattern I was expecting. We basically end up now with every a n is generated by taking negative 1 to the n times a naught divided by n factorial. That's 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Uh, there we go. So we can build the series now. The series is going to be summation n equals 0 to infinity 
of negative 1 to the n. I'm just going to call a naught 1 temporarily because in the series I can always add the constant back in. So this is going to be x to the n divided by n factorial. And you guys will recognize that. That's in the Maclaurin series for e to the negative x. So there's our solution 1, e to the negative x. And as I said, when I put it in to make the basis of solutions, I'll add a constant back in the front. That's what a naught represented. Okay, now I want to find the second solution for that. So recall that the second solution is found by taking y2, which is equal to y1 times the integral of 1 over y1 squared e to the negative integral of p dx, and then I need dx for the outer integral, right? If we look back at the uh, function we started with, the differential equation, uh, 2x plus 1 divided by x is the p function. So that's the first thing I need to do is evaluate negative 2x plus 1 over x dx. And that defaults into the integral of 2 and the integral of 1 over x. So it's going to be 2x plus ln of x. And there's a negative in front, so it's actually minus both of those. So that's negative the integral of 2x plus 1 over x dx is negative 2x minus ln of x. That all becomes the exponent of e. So I've got e to the negative 2x times e to the negative ln of x. And what's that going to be? That's going to be e to the negative 2x. And this will turn out to be just 1 over x. And then what do we do with that? We put all of that there. We divide it by y1 squared and we integrate it. So y1 squared is e to the x, uh, e to the negative 2x. So I want the integral of e to the negative 2x, 1 over x, dx, all divided by e to the negative 2x. These cancel. The integral of 1 over x dx is ln of x. And that becomes the multiplicative power for y1 to make y2. So y2 is now going to be equal to uh, e to the negative x, ln of x. And that makes the basis of solutions, the entire solution, the first solution plus the second one. I'll go ahead and pull out the e to the negative x, and it's going to be c1 plus c2 ln of x. And there it is. That is this full solution to question number five.